Curse of Michael Myers. Uh, it's from the 90s, all right. Uh, has some, like, to me, it has some, like, X-File vibes in it. You know, I, I jokingly told a friend. Uh, it's the, the screenwriter was watching the X-Files while he was writing this. Um, so it's, whew. So it has that like mid that '90s mid '90s vibe to it. The uh, the cuts, you know, those quick cuts, those shocks of cut, uh, definitely screams like '90s music video. Uh, definitely has some X Files influence, uh, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but as far as the movie goes, uh, it plays it a little straighter than Five, which is good. Definitely, you they saw what mistakes they made with Five and. Yeah, there's all that Cult of Thorn stuff and stuff like that, but, you know, uh, as far as this cut's concerned, they play it more like a traditional slasher. Uh, characters are a little more likable in the sense that, uh, you know, the ma the, the main Strode uh, and, I think it was Kara, and her kid, you know, you don't want bad things to happen to them. You can see uh, what they're trying to do. It's like Michael and the Thorn people are getting into their minds, and it's funny because there's like this, the grandma character that uh, Tommy Doyle's living with becomes this part of this conspiracy to, uh, I guess, let Michael Myers do whatever the heck he wants. Uh, so it cracks me up too that the uh, bad guy from Lethal Weapon, the bad guy in this, I just I love Lethal Weapon. And him being the bad guy, it's like, oh yeah, this guy's gonna be bad. I'm not, I, I, I'm interested. I forgot he was in it, in fact. So it made it, well, hey, I'll watch this. So, um, yeah, it kills me. They, again, changed the Michael Myers house. This one looks a little bit more like Michael Myers' house from the front. Looks like they put an addition on the second floor. Uh, but uh, it kind of, it's so funny that they, and I get it. They're not filming it in Pasadena, but still, it's just like, again, they change it. Like, it, 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 it cracks me up. So, you know, uh, considering that I would call, after watching these all, five is the low point so far. I mean, I don't, it, Resurrection might uh, wow me with its terribleness. Uh, but, man, it's not terrible. I'd give it a D plus. I think I gave it an F for a D. Uh has Paul Rudd in it. It's funny, he has a young, oh, and he's like this moody, creepy guy. So it's kind of funny to see Paul Rudd not play what he, I mean, he's Paul Rudd. He plays Paul Rudd in a lot of things. His, you know, that just nice, funny guy. Uh, so it, it, it goes against uh, what he's cast as nowadays. Uh, yeah, not bad. Um, it's hilarious. Like, that hospital is gigantic. Or it's just a gigantic. It's it's so 90s. Like all the, all the pipes and corridors and angled shot and all the red lighting. It's just very 90s. And you know the 90s are back in. So, ah, I would say, I'll probably watch this one again in a few years. I'd like to actually watch the producer's cut to see the craziness that apparently it is. But we'll give this one a solid D plus. Um, tonight. Is H2O, which I remember seeing in theaters, and I uh, rented after that. And I don't remember it being too terrible. Um, it has Jamie Lee Curtis in it, so, you know, it's gonna it's not too bad. Uh, Steve Miner directed it, uh, so it should be pretty interesting, Steve Miner being more associated with uh, Friday the 13th. So, hey, uh, looking forward to watching that one today. Uh, but this one, not bad. D+. Plus. C- minus maybe on a good day. We'll see. I'll, uh, I might have to regrade it uh, if I can get a hold of that producer's cut and rewatch it. I'll probably just, yeah. Or maybe I'll just get on YouTube and I'm sure somebody has that, uh, a recap of all the, the changes and stuff like that so I don't have to go about buying. Because I'm not going to buy this movie. I got this for like 10 cents. That's, that's, that's as much as it's worth to me is 10 cents. But anyway, uh, Halloween H2O night. Y'all, thank you for watching these. Happy Halloween.